All right, good evening. Thank you all for coming out tonight. It is six o'clock, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Megan Covey. I'm the Director of Grants for the um, Clay County Board of County Commissioners. So this is part of our annual process. Each year we receive entitlement funding based on our county's population um, to help improve neighborhoods and housing units within the county. Um, so as part of that process, we collect public input for a 30-day period. We do a number of these public outreach meetings um, to garner your input. Um, for where this money should be going. So we will have some facilitated discussion tonight. Feel free to move closer if you like. If you would like a copy of our annual action plan, which is the document we'll be discussing tonight, we do have some hard copies up here. It's also posted online on our website, um, claycountygov.com, under the community services page. It is um, the CDBG grant program. You'll also find it on our economic services and development webpage. So, um, a couple of other housekeeping items. We have a sign-in sheet in the back. If you would please sign in before you go. We do incorporate all these comments into our annual action plan, which will go to the um, Board of Commissioners for approval in July. Uh, you'll also see green comment cards on the table. So if there's something you would like to submit um, that we don't have time to discuss together as a group, Feel free to fill that out and leave it for us. That input will also be incorporated. Um, so high level overview of the budget we're looking at. The county runs on an October 1 to September 30 fiscal cycle. So we're looking at $1,319 total um, in this entitlement funding. And this is the current proposed breakdown of those funds. Um, we've been running the housing rehab and public infrastructure program since we uh, became entitlement recipients in 2021. So these are existing programs and this is the current proposed split, about $350,000 for housing rehab and about $650,000 for public infrastructure, which can include road improvements and sidewalks um, and other projects of that nature. So we're here to get your input tonight. Thank you so much for participating. Um, and I will go ahead and hand it over to our Director of Community and Social Services, Gabrielle Gunn. Thank you, Megan. Um, so, as she said, we are going to um, be talking about uh, our Community Development Block Grant and the funds for tonight um, uh, are proposed right here. Some things that we're going to do um, in addition to some of the housekeeping is we're going to come up with some group agreements. This is something that we try to do in our facilitated discussion so that the group can collectively agree upon how the evening is going to go. Um, then we are going to um, start with a beginning discussion. I always like to start off on a positive question and then with the um, we'll then move into the main discussion where we'll get to the nitty gritty of tonight's um, conversation. We'll have a summary and wrap up, and in that time, we will have an activity where you guys will be voting um, with your stickers on the table, the dots, on um, your high priority and the um, second priority for funding. Um, with today's uh, meeting, we did not have our uh, name tag labels. We have these. Um, Paddles that are kind of like auction, it's a little fun, but we do not have those and we have you guys write your names on them so that when we, um, when you raise your paddle, we don't say, you know, hey you, we can address you by your name. So we do not have that. So if you do have something to say, please feel free to raise your hand and um, say your name and then we will um, work through that. On the back wall, you'll see this parking lot. Um, we call this our uh, staging area for questions. It could be, you know, you ask a question and we'll say, well, we're not quite there yet, but let's put it on the parking lot so we don't forget what you have to say and we can value that, um, that question and make sure that we have those questions answered by the end of the evening. Um, so I do want to get started with um, the group agreements for this evening. Uh, let's agree on um, a couple of things. Any suggestions for some group agreements tonight? Does someone would someone like an example? Uh, I'd like a question here. Yes, sir. You have things listed up there. On that yes. Board, mm -hmm. right? 
proposed by the Housing Rehab Public Infrastructure. Over mm -hmm. here it says preservation, summary of objective and outcome plans need. Mm -hmm. and preservation housing, code enforcement, and neighborhood improvements. Yes, sir. Those are the items that we're going to send this money to. We are going to talk about... And where do they fit under there? Code enforcement mm -hmm. isn't housing rehab, right. not public infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So here it talks about code. Where would that fall under those two items that are you're donating money to? We're, that is a great question, and we are going to get to that. Um, thank, you, thank you for that question. We have a, two questions that we're going to go over tonight. Um, where you would like to see project funding go, and what types of projects you would like to see with the funding. So that is a great question, and we will make sure that that gets answered later on in today's um, meeting. So going back to the group agreements, um, one thing would be, as I have said before, let, let's have one person speaking at a time. So let's not all speak at once, but have one person speak at a time, just so that everyone's voice can be heard during the, the evening. Okay, I'll have the second one. Uh, I'll have coffee and donuts in a half hour. Oh. <laughs> Man, I had dinner before I got yeah. here. <laughs> we will take that into consideration for next time. Thank you, sir. All right, anyone else? Thank you. What was your name again? Carrie. Thank you, Carrie. All right. Hard on the issue, not the person. Appreciate your feedback. Get done by seven. That is the timeline for this evening. Thank you. And what was your name again, sir? David. David. David, we have our agenda for this evening, and we're going to try to get out of here at seven o'clock on the dot. Okay. Very sorry. Um. We, I'm going to give, during our facilitation, we're going to give each other time to write. We want to make sure that things are being expressed clearly. So if you see us writing something on the board and it's not what you're saying, please feel free to stop us and correct us so we can write exactly what you want us to say. Any other agreements for this evening? No? Okay. Thank you very much. And I'm going to turn it over to Tara to start with our um, beginning discussion. All right, good evening everybody. My name is Tara Costich. I am the Housing Program Manager here in Clay County. Um, I am responsible for making sure that the program portion of CDBG runs smoothly. So that means that everybody that applies for funding, whether it be for the housing rehab um, and then those infrastructure projects, making sure that those kind of stay on track and that we have everything that we need so that when it's turned over to grants, they have everything that they need to make sure that that process is running smoothly start to finish. Um, so what I would like to do is um, have our beginning question, which is what quantities make up a vibrant neighborhood or community? And if you guys have feedback, if you just raise your hand and I'll come to you and Yes, ma'am. Trees and fences. Trees and fences. We have plenty of those already. Okay. Fiber. Sounds good. Trees and fences. And what was your name, ma'am? Laura. Laura. Thank you. So, would you like to see more of those items, or keep what we have, or? I think we're doing very good. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? Please say your question again. What? What qualities make up a vibrant community or neighborhood? Good infrastructure. Okay. and services uh, essential for for life 
Is there a grocery store here? Is there a gas station here? Is there that type of, 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 of operations in the community? Like sustenance type? Yeah. Yeah, does the trash service come when it's supposed to, things like that. Services that has to be affordable right. for that for that community. Does anybody else have anything? We have trees and fences, good infrastructure, community-driven events, goods and services with grocery stores, trash services on time, um, that everyone has access to what they need, good affordable housing, schools, and libraries. Recreational facilities. Recreational facilities? Yeah, recreation, yeah. Everybody's not working all the time. So a good example is this beach. Very good for the community. Uh, community relations with the city government. Isn't it about the same every year you know? What's that? question is what kind of neighborhood infrastructure needs to be implement, implemented to create a safer living environment? Our second question is what types of specific projects would you like to see within these budget categories? Alright, so for the first question, what kind of neighborhood infrastructure needs to be implemented to create a safer living environment? What was your name again? Laura. Laura. 
Sidewalk. Sidewalks, okay, thank you. Carrie, did you understand that? Improved roads. In, okay, thank you. Dirt roads, specifically. Thank you, Carrie. Oh. Next. Lighting and signage. Thank you. Nina. Okay. Oh, I'm, I'm going to get all of them, I'm sure, by the end of the evening. <laughs> yes, sir, David. Water and sewer, fire hydrants. Okay, thank you. Water and sewer, water and, sewer and fire hydrants. And please give us grace on our spelling. We are not spelling bee champions. We will do the best we can with our spelling. Good? Yes. All right, next. This is your time to shine. Let's make sure that we add that, that they're hurricane ready. Our mobile homes have They're hardened. They're not. So post Andrew, they have straps. Mobile homes came with, they, they make them more secure than. When they're put in, they, they have yes. the strapping and not only how they're manufactured, but then when they're installed. Great question. They're installed. Right. Thank you, Isaac. There's a lot in our, in our community that are not to the standard of Hurricane Andrew, which was roughly a mid 90s standard. Basically, what we're saying is they're older than mid 90s. Yeah, they aren't. They don't. They don't have any of those codes. Yeah, not just the straps. Yeah, they got to be built. Yes, sir. So the reason David, oh. the reason I brought up safety is because I was wondering was it that or are we talking about emergency services? That's a fair. That's a, good one. That's a no, fair question. Police and fire. Police okay. And fire. Yeah. Um, public Police safety access. Is that would that be fair? Public safety access. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And I'm abbreviating P PS public safety access. Um, David, you were talking about infrastructure. What what were you? Um, no, I was just wondering how the housing falls into the infrastructure. I always thought infrastructure is what you have to build your neighborhood mm -hmm. so people can have homes and schools and things but aren't necessarily part of infrastructure. My definition of infrastructure would include a home. Okay. But that's all right. I mean, that's... Right. That's I mean, right. I'm not that Webster. Is the question specifically about infrastructure? No, it's okay. in general. Okay. What was your question as you read it to us? What? what? What kind of neighborhood infrastructure needs to be implemented to create a safer living environment? Okay. Does anybody else have anything else they'd like to add to this question? You've all had some really great feedback. <coughs> I haven't quite heard on you. <coughs> what was your name, sir? Oh, okay. <coughs> We're just listening. Anybody else want to say anything before we move on to the next? I mean, I'll question. throw in there uh, underground power, uh, you know, moving the power lines underground. Uh, okay, underground utilities. Yeah, utilities. <coughs> um, that could be. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's a broader term. Thank you. And also, um, youth activities. If 
if kids kids are eventually going to have a way to express themselves. Yes. And if you don't help them channel it, it will be destructive to the neighborhood. So what kind of youth activities would Do, you count that as? Well, we have a basketball court. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I, I walk our dog around here after dark. Okay. And there's kids trying to play in the dark. Mm. Is that necessarily good for the safety of them playing? Will they get injuries? Mm -hmm. And then if they go, well, I don't want to do that, then what else are they going to do for activities at night? Go around and vandalize something? That's fair. So you have to, when I lived here as a youth, we, we tried to do things in order to help the youth have some place to go after school so we didn't we didn't have people getting in trouble. Just make sure let's put after school activities as well. Yeah. Sounds like boys and girls well, it, yeah. yeah, if you were around if you were around Keystone in the mid seventies, uh, Frank Johnson with the uh, Friendship Corner where uh, CBS is now. We had ping pong tables and pool tables and everything free for kids just to come in and play. So would it be fair to also say for youth activities, you mentioned lighting, kids playing in the dark, so would it be their safety during those activities? Well, the problem is if you're trying to have a basketball game in the dark, you're not going to know if there's a safety it, yeah, if there's something on the court. Right, so right. With, with appropriate yeah, and then that, then you're going to need the emergency services because of that. It's a, that's, that's a fair response. It's a snowball effect. Like where is the net the volleyball? The net is closed out there. I'm not sure. That is city property. It is. And, it is. and I'm with the county today. <laughs> Your office is in. That, that question can be directed to Nina after the meeting. <laughs> Sorry, Nina. 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 I'm, I'm close. I'm almost there. All right. Any other, any other feedback on this question before we move on to projects? Well, we had recreation before, and I guess recreation would be there too, but that's basically what he's talking about. Yeah. Part of youth activities. So, if we're thinking about this kind of area of community, what needs to be implemented? And if you're if you're saying recreational activities, what would those suggestions be that you have? Like ping pong tennis, volleyball okay. nets, you know, okay. basketball courts. Okay. Pickleball. So like parks and pickleball parks, yeah. Okay. That's what parks usually have is an assortment of great playground for the kids. Here. Yes. Pickleball okay. is on the rise, that is for pickleball. sure. Yes, sir. So the new park that was just created just north of 16 on 21 that the county just uh, launched or opened? Yes, ma'am, the regional park. Yes. So I know that they're going to have. You know, football and some other, they've got a practice field, yes, a variety of things there. Do they have plans to have like um, basketball courts or anything like that there as well? So there is um, eight phases. Well, it's a multi phase, but first, the first phase has been completed, and their county and the Parks and Recs team, multiple different departments, are working on the next steps moving forward on in what that looks like. So um, there is a long term effort for that. Um, but has I mean, it's going to be an amazing complex. Yes, ma'am. I mean, what I would love to see is some sort of a, a plan for like a shuttle system for the kids to get shuttled oh, from that, here okay. to there. Pl okay, so we'll, like a routine time that they go and go for the day. A regularly yes. scheduled shuttle time for students. Yeah, once it gets okay. once it gets more established with more things that they can do there. Yes, ma'am. I know in the city we've got some ideas on what we are planning for basketball courts, tennis courts, etc. Okay. Um, whether or not that's a huge project, um, but I don't know the timeline with the, uh, the park out in 16. It looks really uh, pretty amazing for what it's going to offer. Yes. And I would love to see our kids get access, especially the older okay. ones, to that type of property. Okay. You know, and if we had a way to shuttle them there like two times a day or something, mm -hmm. you know, two time, two shuttles back and forth, especially the older ones, you know, the parents can allow them to go and it's yes. a safe place to eat. You know, it might be an opportunity for them to do something different. Thank you. Um, we put shuttle, two, two 
to and from sports complex for youth. Is that is that fair? Anything yeah, else? that's fair. Once you can get some other um, amenities that would be okay. applicable to that, say 15 and up age group. Okay. I mean, I don't see 11 or 12 year olds going out there without an adult. But, you know, you would get I think, uh, especially when they're so bored and hanging around here in the park. Yes. Yes. Thank you for that. I think especially that shows Brendan. We can roll out some things that we would like to see back here. Okay. Great. Thank you for that feedback. Our more, more local county parks, you know, that have the Twin Lakes Park. Little rain lake that mm -hmm. have some of those things that are yeah, closer yeah. in, so some opportunities. So you want more local parks? No, I think I think the, the shuttle, the, the way to get people okay. there to kind of help the transportation piece of it. Okay. Um, so how far is it? Just a little rain weather for the last five miles. It's I would say probably more like three miles, I would think like a little rain, somewhere in there. But okay. Make sure you put under that shuttle she was uh, expressing specifically for the regional park and then um, to the existing surrounding Some parks. Some that are surrounding outside of the city, but yes. Eastern Ontario. Okay. Because there are several. Even some that have the little mall and the things. And Everett has our bus transportation, so that's another one. Yeah. 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 A shuttle from the front of a low income neighborhood like High Ridge to the grocery store okay. or to City Hall or mm -hmm. to Play Electric to those kinds of places that people need to access the services. Right. Thank you. Okay, did you get that? So, public transportation to services, would that be fair? And then just. Sure. Okay. You can put IE, the grocery store. To um, what else did you say, Carrie? To the library, grocery store, um, you know, city hall, library, okay. Okay. okay, to public service. Then you need to you know, the things you need yes. to get to. Does the county already provide elderly service to uh, doctor's offices? Um, the county does provide senior yes. services senior. to. Um, the senior centers here in Clay County. Is that your question? Yeah. And there's medical. You can apply for medical, medically. I what Transportation disadvantaged individuals. Yeah. Yes. Great question. Any other feedback? This one is going to wrap us up for the question of what kind of neighborhood infrastructure needs to be implemented to create a safer living environment? I just add one, uh, yeah. just that um, as we're thinking about new services, the way the law is changing, I think going into the next two years, is the flip of the earlier time slot for high school and elementary schools, that the way the state law that is on the books, yeah. the one thing that they change before next school year, is going to make, you know, kind of flip a lot of those things that are high school students right now go to school at 7.30ish yes, and later. elementary goes 8.30 and that's likely going to flip, uh, which is going to change a lot of those programmatic things of after school activities and, and programs and, um, and, and how those things are going to need to be formatted uh, looking ahead as those changes are. Okay, so would you say that would be being proactive in the upcoming school time change yeah. okay okay and that's still question one right yes once she gets close to finish david i'll get that i have the easier of the two jobs for this evening Yes, sir. ADA centers upgrade our ADA centers throughout, throughout the city. Are these? I don't know about the county so much, but you know, Keystone Heights and areas. The uh, American Disability Act yes, needs sir. to be implemented, and it seems like a lot of places are still behind that with the ramps access. Okay. So I you're talking stores locally, you know, all the watering mat. They don't, you know, have the grab bars and toilets and all. Okay. Upgrade. Uh, update ADA standards. Throughout the county, city. Okay. 
you're not updating the standards. You're bringing the uh, buildings uh, uh, up to the yeah. 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 Update ADA compliance. Thank you, Sarah. Anything else? Okay, thank you for your feedback. Now we're going to start thinking about, thinking about question number two. Question number two is, what types of specific projects would you like to see within these budget categories? So we have these budget categories right here, as a reminder, housing rehab and public infrastructure. There is, um, that goes under neighborhood revitalization, and for this cycle, it's not in this cycle. Because there's already funding would be. That is correct. Okay. That is correct. So this is for this next fiscal year. So, thank you. Great question. Public infrastructure. Yeah. What types of projects would you like to see with that? Well, the ADA standards and not updated, but implemented. Okay, so implement ADA standards. Do you have a specific area, specific target category? Uh, numerous buildings seem not to apply by it. I mean, the restrooms. Okay, restrooms. Would that be public restrooms? Uh, yes, I guess they're grandfathered in because they're so old or whatever, they didn't have to do that. And I'm sure they wouldn't be built currently under those standards. Okay. I'm thinking of a laundry mat in particular, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's basically it. Okay. Ramps, sidewalks. Area. So let's make sure we put that ramps and sidewalks. And you did say grab bars. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so All right, next. I'll repeat the question. What types of specific projects would you like to see within these budget categories? For yes, that, David? I go back to the ADA again for housing rehab. Okay. There are people that are handicapped or who have become handicapped that need ramps and accessibilities mm -hmm. and improvement to their homes. Okay. Uh, housing rehab. One's public infrastructure, which is a general ADA thing. The other thing is somebody in need of mm -hmm. ramp building. Yes. Bathroom improvement. Something. Great. So just to let you guys know what I'm doing is for each one, if it's public infrastructure or home rehab, I'm kind of just putting those initials next to it. So since this one fits both, I did both initials. Thank you, Tara. Next. Okay, so question. Sorry. Mobile homes, are, are we including that in our housing rehabs? That is not in this funding cycle. Okay, so I, that is something we need to figure out. What are we going to do about mobile homes that need repairs or need to be replaced? Okay. Do you know where public infrastructure is in this outline here this summer? This um, is 24-25. Uh, the grants team is actually the one that prepared that and the director is looking through that. So if you just okay. give a couple of minutes. All right. Page 20, uh, number, project number five includes your improvements. This is a pretty general description. Um, okay. um, repair and replace. Did you find it? Yes. Okay. So again, it, I, everything I see in here pre much for low and moderate income benefit areas, you're always going to moderate income, so that's based off of the HUD guidelines. So we, well, based off of this funding, that's what this funding can be used for is those LMI areas, so the low to moderate income areas. Low to moderate income areas. And to specific individuals. So it could be categorized by an individual or a um, zip code or... Um, they have to be low income. Moderate. Yes, that is correct. Phase 11, Clay County does not have home funds as of this date. C 
PBG funds be leveraged in partnership? Yes, sir. What, what is the question? I just, I thought the county is implementing these funds. So this, we are actually on year three of these funds. That's your question? This is for CDBG, so Community Development Block Grant? It's just about home, about the home program. Yeah. HOME yeah. program, okay. okay. And so what was your question? No, I guess they don't have a fund for the home funds in particular, but if you have the grant funds for those items there. Yes, sir. That's what you're breaking out right now. That's what the public, yes, sir. That is what this citizen participation plan for this meeting is, is for the CDG funds. So to add to that, there's separate types of CDBG funds. Entitlement, which is what we're here discussing, home is what's in there that is a separate fund. It's a se it would be a separate plan once we start okay. to develop it's that. No, this is not that's not okay. part of this. Okay. Not right. for the C P. That's a separate program. All right. Excuse me for distracting. No, 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 no. These are these are the Just types of questions time. that we want. We are still on time, so we are fine. Um, while you keep looking at that, did anybody else have any comments on types of specific projects? I think the solar would be really a good thing. Okay. For renewable energy. Renewable energy. Renewable energy. Yeah. Okay. Why not? Like um, city buildings. Library on city buildings. buildings. Okay. Um, library schools, wherever we go. Okay. On. Um, County-owned facilities. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you for that. Uh, did you have one, Mr. Bean? No. I'm, I'm just wondering. I we just recently moved back to the area. What is the? Um, we have a a nice fire station just north of town. What about uh, police? Do they just work out of the <coughs> city hall or? Because we don't have city police, we have county police right. here. This is a substation. Yes. Where is the substation? Oh, I thought that was. So I can weigh in on that. Uh, we do not have city police. Um, and mm -hmm. re our crime level does not really do it. Right. It costs a lot of money to have a substation. Plus, you have to dedicate one of the officers that we would have allocated to sit in that building. So it doesn't make a lot of sense. So we are covered solely by Clay County, and now they're interlocal. So um, Bradford, Clay, I believe, and Palatka all work together. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm yeah. They all work together for who is ever available. So we have like multiple resources now, three sheriffs that help support us and our needs. So it's even a bigger, bolder um, support than most people have anywhere. It's probably more so than Duval. Mm -hmm. So that's how, that's what we have. I mean, I don't know if you all saw recently in Bradford County now is the sheriff's office for Stark. They lost their city police. They were spending a million dollars a year for their police department and out of their city budget. And now they're spending 600,000 a year for the support of the Clay County, of the Bradford County Sheriff's Office. So you see the difference. Um, but we, you know, I think we're very well covered. Um, I really strongly recommend that citizens go to the sheriff and meetings. They're held once a quarter where um, the, the sheriff would show up and um, many times and her team, and most of her team was always there, about four folks, and they will talk to you about what's happening specifically in our city, and they will ask, they will answer specific questions you may have, too, about something that maybe you're kind of concerned about. Then you may, like, I saw that in the paper, I saw it on Facebook, they will specifically answer those questions, but they do update you on all the details. But what I was uh, referring to is, if this is planning for the out years, mm -hmm. do we need to take into consideration? Right now, I believe that the crime in Keystone is very low, it's mainly petty. It is. But, it's like less than 2%. but do we have to just keep in our mind that, yeah, someday we might need it? We had no crime whatsoever in Keystone, then we had three major crimes when I was growing up. We had a murder, a bank robbery, and a kidnapping which turned into two deaths. You know, and that all happened right after another. And then that's when the county finally said, oh, 
your two retired policemen from Chicago are in bed by 10 o'clock, maybe that's not the best thing for your town. So. so based off of that back and forth, thank you for that clarification. I apologize for misspeaking on that. What type of, did you have a specific project in mind? No, it, 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 my question was, is, is it being covered? Okay. And it, and it is. Okay. It's for a safe, healthy community, mm -hmm. we need emergency services. We have a fire station, mm -hmm. great one. We have an ambulance service, great. I just don't really know what, what was going on with the police force here. Okay. Related to that, though, roads, like improving our roads would help our emergency services make sure they have access. Also, including, I love your point about <laughs> All right, so you're saying project would be um, roads, improve roads for access, um, public safety access, timely public safety access. Did I get all that right? Yeah. Okay. You know, I get water. Not but, really well uh, versed on that topic. Yeah, because the infrastructure there is going to be you can only put a fire hydrant where there is water. Uh, well, well, where there's city water. The, you know, the for like it's not really Keystone City Water, but it's where the where the Clay County Utility Authority has their lines is the only place you can have uh, that you can have a hydrant. So expanding that would then provide opportunity in space. Yes. Would that be, um, so just so I can clarify, expanding available fire hydrants for public safety? Sure. Is that what you were? Yes. Okay. And then lower your insurance. Home insurance, of course, oh. is going up. Okay. So if you have a uh, fire hydrant within a quarter mile or something, they reduce your rates, XYZ. Yeah. I just wanted to Terry, how about clarification? If we're doing fire hydrants, we have to have water accessibility. I, I, I would think they have to go so, hand in hand. I'm almost certain. It's bigger than just fire hydrants, too, because then you would have to have the infrastructure to drink the water. To so it would be, it wouldn't just be fire hydrants. It would be expand the water system. Yeah, yeah. The water, you know, Clay County water. Okay. You know, expand Clay County co-op water. Their area. Okay. Yes. As you mentioned before, they only have fire hydrants where they have Clay County water. So they need to expand that or get a fire. Mm -hmm. All right, so just so we can recap, expand utility services within Keystone Heights area, i.e. fire hydrants, water, etc. Any other comments for projects? I mean, I wouldn't necessarily call it a project, but I do get some programming about, um, you know, for housing issues, whether it be for homelessness or just, um, you know, low-income people that, you kind of how to get into these types of housing rehab you know, funds and, and kind of some ways to programmatically provide support. Okay, so public service programming. We just had our peaceful and safety meeting okay. last week, and one of the things we talked a lot about was the barriers that people face accessing this kind of funding. If they can apply for a home rehab but they don't know about it, or they can't pull out the paperwork, or they mm -hmm. can't. You got to drive the green code to get this document that you know we don't have a local opportunity or option for, and then how we can how we as organizations might be able to help support that. I think all of that is, is pieced together, not just for the community members that yep. might be accessing, but for people like Keystone Safety Net or other organizations that might want to help support. People. So I'm hearing two things. One would be um, public service programming 
for individuals to get into these programs. And then the second is access to be able to apply for these programs. Okay, so programming and access. And ideally, your programming would, would facilitate the access, right? That, like, there'd be no people have these barriers. Mm -hmm. If we create some programming, whether it's partnered with nonprofits or counties doing it themselves, like. A collaboration. Create, right, and you okay. create a place where people are already accessing services, and then you can say, hey, by the way, mm -hmm. look, we have. Okay. Okay, so you're also saying working with local partners on addressing the barriers that their clients are having. Okay. In addition to these specific programmings. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Just, just a question again, uh, because so we have high reach, which is which is a low income. Uh, as more and more services are online, mm -hmm. which uh, sometimes what is online is very difficult to get to because of web design, but do people around here at low un income even have access to the internet to do the only online services to sign up for something? Now you can't go to the library you can't go to the library and access a computer, but do we need, does the count, should the county be addressing access to online services for low income? Okay, thank you. That was a real loud, roundabout way. <laughs> That's fine, you <laughs> clarified at the end, you did just fine. You're you guys are having great conversation, we appreciate it. Are you thinking the whole county or Keystone? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking very locally, which is Keystone, and it's not that I don't think of the city limits. I think of this this end of the county. Okay. Uh, not, I'm not really thinking of the problems that may be up in Orange Park or Green Cove because I don't ever go up there. <laughs> they have broadband there. We don't have you know, speed, internet speed. Okay, so just to recap, access to internet for LMI area, so low to moderate income in Keystone Heights area. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Any other project um, proposals? What type of, um, again, what type of adult education courses are down here? Uh, Especially low in income, do we have an easy way for um, people to, to be trained into areas to have better job opportunities? That is a great question. We will definitely add that because career counseling is up there. No, not counseling, but courses. Oh, so are you saying education courses for a continuing education degree, or are you asking about um, like a GED or? Uh, for GED. Okay. We have some local nonprofits that do assist with that. Okay. So see. But I do think, you know, to, to jump on that one, because uh, that's kind of my area, is um, the, the unique barriers of Keystone, you know, as you say, Keystone, Keystone is Clay County. But Keystone community definitely expands into Bradford and the Button. Right. And so where the city has an air local agreement on you know some of the policing of this area, um, some of those types of air local agreements, especially in regard to education, could be beneficial. Uh, you know, the one that pops in my mind is Santa Fe College is less than a mile from where we sit by the road, like not even just at the profiles. But they are not serving Clay County residents outside of Keystone Heights High School uh, because the agreement is localized down to the high school students, but providing continuing education and those kind of things through, uh, you know, the, the local college, the Keystone College, is in that space off of some of those barriers that get put up at county lines or wherever they get put up. In this case, it is a county line that Bradford County 
that the clay that San Jose College services Bradford County did not play um, in, in, in the way the state organizes that. And I know that's outside of this topic, but that unique barrier system um, to the Keystone Heights community really is very valid in a lot of ways of how you know we we are connected into Putnam and Bradford. In a lot of ways we mirror Putnam and Bradford in, in, in more ways than we do sometimes. Fleming Island and the places that are that are within our Thank you, Isaac. All right, so adult education as a project. Any other project recommendations? Anyone's? Let's recap. We have ADA compliance throughout um, areas, ramps, sidewalks, grab bars. Then we have have what is the plan for. Uh, mobile homes in the future repair or replace renewable energy for county owned facilities improved roads for timely public safety access expand utility services within Keystone Heights area ie fire hydrants water etc then over here we have public service programs and access to programs work with local groups to identify um, Oh, identify and break down barriers, I apologize. Access to internet for LMI in areas in Keystone, and then adult education or continuing education. Yes, sir. For housing rehab, would that also include breaking, parking, talking housing? Who, who's housing is, are we talking about here? They don't do mobile homes, so they're out. Mm -hmm. So other, I saw something in here about existing, new, and rental homes. Is that rentals fall in that category too now? Reynolds do not. Reynolds do not fall. It has to be it, here individual. That individual. That was a different grant, I guess, that was mentioned in here that they talked about in the past. I guess they did. Yeah, okay. New, existing, and rentals. Uh, so we don't do that. So housing rehab. We go out and give people new roofs. Yes, Can that is one of hurricane that is a project category. Okay. Not hurricane ready. That is not a project. Hurricane ready. Placing the roof would be yes. Windows. It could be yes. I don't know if that do you want me to write? Do you want do to? We have something like that on the list. Yeah. Okay. So it's, if you don't mind. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. So currently in our home rehab um, application, what individuals can do is there are two categories. Um, there's category one, which includes your roof re repair or replacement. HVAC repair and replacement, ADA, I think the way that we put it is ADA accommodations. So it would be individuals that need a ramp or individuals that need a bathtub taken out of their home and replaced with a walk-in shower um, or the elevated toilets and grab bars, those types of things. Um, and I don't believe that there, I, there's four on in category one. And then in category two, it's electrical, plumbing, um, and other. So we do have the ability to kind of add some things to the application if individuals need those other items, like the windows or um, you know siding on their home to be replaced or something like that. And that's only for low income. It is for individuals that qualify in the 80th percentile of low, low to moderate income. Yes, and it depends on how many people are in the house. So that the it's it's kind of a matrix, right? So if there's one individual, it's like fifty-four thousand. If there's two, it goes up a little bit. If there's three, and on and on. Thank you, Tara. All right. One last question. Any other comments? Okay. So on your tables, you have. Did you have something, Carrie? Well, I just noticed we talked about the shuttle question one, but we didn't really move it over to question two as a project. I don't know. I know because are we prioritizing all of the things that we're prioritizing these that we talk, talk about as projects? With your stickers, you're prior, prioritizing these budgets. Oh, budgets, okay. Which one is high and which one is low? Okay, got it. Okay. okay. All right, so on your, on your table, you have a blue and you have a pink, I mean red, sorry. A blue and a red. The red means is a low priority and the blue means high priority. So you get to take a sticker, only one sticker per person, 
and you can come up here and place a dot next to um, the which uh, area of funding is high priority or low priority on this scale. Right, so oh, any any time. That's, yeah. You get one sticker, really one blue, one blue, one red. Blue is high priority, red is low. I want improvements in my neighborhood. I don't care about the poor. That's not, that's not very, you know. You don't have to vote. This is an activity for us to get data on what the community deems as high priority versus low priority. Not everybody jump up at once, though. One of each color. Just like your wife has right here. High, blue is high, red is low. Thank you very much. Um, we'll just make sure you write that second. Blue is high. We have an extra second. Yeah, Are you, are the rest of you not voting? <laughs> Thank you, David. All right. I said seven o'clock and I'm working hard to get you out of here at seven o'clock. We're still, we, we were strategizing back there. So making our votes really count. Are you voting for everyone? No, okay. they're gonna vote their own. All right, so as you're doing that, as a reminder, oh, the Megan, this is your part, sorry. Did we, did we answer their parking lot question? Where does funding go? again for participating tonight. Just a quick recap of the rest of our public comment period. It opened on June 11th. It will run through July 10th. So if there are others in the community that you would like to have their input, um, they're welcome to submit those comments either online, um, in person, or by phone. We have all the instructions published in our legal ad notice. We can get you copies of those if you need it. Um, again, that's also published on our website at claycountygov.com and it's been published in Clay today as well. Um, we will be at the Middleburg Public Library tomorrow night, June 18th at 6 p.m. Um, and then we will do another in-person meeting on June 27th, that's a Thursday at 6 p.m. at the Orange Park Public Library. So if there are no other questions, thank you.